Hi, and welcome to Kujo Sound. Today we'll be going back to a little bit more of a traditional Kujo Sound video where we will just work around in Unity here and try to develop a little further on our spline system that we, that we made in some of the previous videos. The spline system itself, which I've been told by a programmer, a spline means that something is curved. I don't know. To me, it's just, you know, the straight line between all these points. Anyway, we have our emitter that moves, and right now it just plays this river sound. I removed the forest ambient sound so that we could easier just hear the river. Uh, let's let's try and hit play, and you can hear the river, and you can see the, sp the object move along the spline. Yep, here we are. And as we move... You see the object follows on the spline, and that is great. Now, right now we only have that one sound of river. What if we, I mean, okay, sure, this isn't the most detailed river that we can find, but what if we want this river to like automatically figure out how it should sound so that basic river sound we had before plays whenever the water is calm like that but what if what if let's say i placed some stones here it looks like shit but pardon my french stones here but what if we could automatically track okay there are stones in this area and then sort of like turn up a more rapid river sound so that we could basically just say this is a spline system this is a river and it could automatically generate the river sound for us that would be really great now also Notice this fantastic waterfall I've made here. If we press play, you'll... I am the greatest visual artist on the planet, I'm sure. Um, I basically just took this plane of water and up here. And this particle system, I am amazed by my ability to make it. Anyway, somehow, if we could make that automatically track that we are working with a waterfall, we could add the waterfall sound to it. Sure, we could technically just create an empty object and place it here and then in there and say okay right here there is now a waterfall sound that, that, that could be a simple solution let's end this here now the way we're going to do this is that we are going to first of all be moving all these rocks so that they can Go over here instead, so that they don't mess with our waterfall. Rock, rock, I need to hit the rock, here we go. Rock, 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 rock. Now, anyway, just like my one of my previous Wise series, which is like 99 ways of footsteps, which is basically like creating the same footstep, but in as many ways possible. With Wise, we are probably, probably going to try and do the same thing here with just these uh, procedural generated rivers where we can do it in one way, we can do it with rigid bodies and tra track these stones automatically, or we can do some sort of mapping of the river ourselves where we can sort of say, in this area, we want this value here, like give it a bunch of values that can automatically be tracked and so on, so on, which means that we could Instead of calculating the rocks there and the waterfall there, we could basically just map it out with a collider and say, this is how we want it. Or we could, because we know where on the spline point we are, could say that if we are between two and three here, we want a more rapid river, but that's that, that's many ways of doing it. One of the more interesting ways of doing it is creating paint maps, which we will get to in a couple of videos once we have had Nikolai Dehan come in and explain how they made a paint map for one of his games where I was his lecturer on the Danish Academy of Digital and Interactive Art. He will show us how they made a paint map because we want to talk about that. And then we will simply try and take this paint map and explain how it can be used in many, many, many different ways. Uh, now, anyway, we have these rocks here. Let's get rid of the other rocks that are blocking our path over here so that they don't mess with anything. The problem with this solution that we are going to be using now is that to do this, down here on our emitter, let's get rid of the audio source here. Remove component. We will need to save this as a prefab because we need this. So this here is an emitter object spline river, which means that we know that, that this is now our our spline emitter prefab thing. So we can always just alter things and save it to this, and then we can use this over and over and over again. Here we have our, this is our actual audio emitter 
Great. And here on this, we will need a sphere collider. And the problem with this sphere collider is that it probably needs to be, let's say 20. Is that too big? Yeah, that's too big. Let's say 10, no, five, five. Yeah, then it can track what is inside of it within five meters. And so we are going to be needing a spline emitter script. Now let's see if we can make this work. Let's go to our rocks here. Let's see, there are stones, well, stones, rocks, whatever we want to call them. They only have mesh renderers, colliders, and so on. We really need them to have a rigid body so that we can track these, which means that these objects also get physics. So this is quite inefficient uh, if we, well, of course we care, but I'm pretty sure programmers will tell you how much they care, apparently. Um, you would call it a rigid body. Anyway, all these stones here, they'll need a tag. We'll just add a game tag and we are going to be calling it audio underscore river rock. <laughs> That's brilliant, brilliant. Good. So here, stones, audio river rock. Now they all have this. Good. In our emitter script, or say over here in our spline emitter script, we will say, we'll need, just get rid of this. We will say void on trigger enter. Actually, we should do this the other way. We should say private on trigger stay collider other. And to begin with, if other does not, other dot tag does not equal an audio rock river, <laughs> river rock audio. I don't know. It sounds like a band. Audio river rock, right. There you go. Which means that if the tag of whatever we collide with is not that, then do that. Else, let's just say print rock in sight. So you see, now it triggers that rock is in sight. Uh, we have an array that's also out of bounds, but let's just ignore that for now. But this means that let's up here make a private int. No, actually, it needs to be public. Uh, public int of rock count, which first is equal to nothing. Actually, it should be equal to zero. Now, we, we know that it works with on trigger stay, but we should actually have it on trigger enter because we also need to know when it exits. So on trigger enter collider other da, 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 there we go and then we say rock count plus equals one and we have a private void on trigger that's not what we want on trigger exit collider other There, and we basically just say the same thing. And rock is out of sight. And rock count equals minus equals one, which means that rock count simply becomes what it was before plus one. Rock count becomes what it was before minus one. So whenever we enter an area with a rock, this value becomes one. And when we leave it again, it becomes zero if there's only one rock. But let's see here uh, if we can somehow, let's actually, let's make an update function here. Um, void update here. Actually, let's get rid of this print here. So we can say 
debug dot log rock count. There you go. So now it should tell us constantly in the console what the rock count is. So if we run into all these rocks, it'll tell us how many rocks there are. We can set a value that says uh, how, how much to divide it by. So let's say if there are 10 rocks, we want the volume to be one, something like that. Let's give it a spin here. Right, so you see it says zero here. So now that when we run closer to the rocks, there should be about five of them. Now there's, see, it's three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. Which means that we now know exactly how many rocks are within our collider's sphere. This we will get rid of. Good. And let's make a public float called rock division. And right now we just want it to be one because then we can divide by that. Uh, da, 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 and, and we will need a private float rock volume, which is equal to zero when we start. And down here in our update function, we will say that rock volume equals rock count divided by rock division. And then we could say here, uh, debug log rock volume. Just in this case, it, which means that, that right now rock division is one, so then nothing happens. But if we set that to let's say 10, then when all five of the rocks are in there, the value will be 0 0.5. Then that means we can turn up the volume of some river thing with rocks in it. Let's see here. So if we get the number right, it should should work. All right. Right now it's zero. This is this is this is um the rock volume that we see. Let's see. One, two, three, four. What? Is that because there are floats point zero F point zero F. Oh wait, that's because we didn't change the number. Right. So yeah, rock division should be 10, right, right, <laughs> math, right, yeah, let's run, see, 0 0.4, da, 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 5. and that's a much better number for us, because if we have an audio source here, the value of the volume is between zero and one, which means that the volume would be 0 0.5 if this would play correctly. Now, in our spline script, let's public bool, and we want a rocks. And we want it to be false. Let me say we want a public bool waterfall. We want to also that to be false because we will then then we can alter those because then we can sort of tell our script once it loads which ones of these do we need. So as you see in here, like, basically you could have let's say rocks, waterfall, uh, tree wooden planks, whatever there could be in the water. But what if you want this specific river to ignore one of these, then you could simply just not tag rocks. But normally, let's say in our case, we want it specifically to keep track of rocks. Which also means that we could say, that we should say here actually, that if, if rocks, rock count does this because else we don't want the rock count to go up. Here we go, and there we go. Same with the waterfall, but we'll, we'll deal with that at some other point. Uh, it, this is just an example of waterfalls and so on. Anyway, which also means that we will need a public audio source called, let's call it rock source. And we will need a public audio source called waterfall source, just for the sake of it. Now, private void st 
start. If rocks, we want rock source to be equal to game object dot add component audio source like that. Good. And if waterfall oh. waterfall we will just say waterfall source equals game object dot add component audio source new inputs there we go yeah technically like i said before we won't need this waterfall source it's just for the sake of the example so that you can read it actually this looks horrible there we go so if we in our project here say that we want rocks to be true it will create an audio source for us that we can use we can then define stuff to rocks take a look at this there we go so because we have an audio source now we can start adding sounds to it and so on and let's say here which we will then also need a public audio clip which we will call the rock sound because we will need to initialize this somehow and which means that we will then say rock source dot play on awake uh, that's actually that's automatically true so we need rock source dot loop to be true and we need rock source dot max distance to be y 20 what else do we want so it's looping and it plays the audio source we actually also need to establish actually let's say here rock source dot play on awake equals false and then we will say rocks rock source dot clip equals rock sound it's heavy and it's a rock ball you should all play panda ball it's really good and rock source rock source dot play there we go technically the best solution would probably be to track if we are within this collider first before we play so that it doesn't play all the time but let's find a river sound that can play and then we can fade in this rock sound whenever we get there uh, da, 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 da. and we will say here that rock source dot volume equals rock volume Ta -da! this of course needs to be down here on there we go so again we should actually say that if rocks there we go rock source volume becomes rock volume good let's try it again no trial and error guys All right Spawns our emitter, spawns our source as we want it. Now that we run closer to these rocks, you will see the volume change, which means that we can now actually add a river sound to the overall soundscape of this river, and then we can have some rocks fade in and out. Now let's let's try that out in our spline script. Let's just make sure that we have public audio clip, which we will call river sound which is going to be our main river sound which means that we will hear we will then say public audio source river source we did already make that didn't we anyway here we will say river source equals game object dot add component audio source there we go 
and we also need to initialize this. So we will say river source, and we have a game object add component audio source like that. And we need to initialize it. So we can simply say all these. So now we also have, we get a river source and a rock source. And our river source will, of course, have the same max distance as we initialize it. We can initialize many of these up here. But if we press play now, you will see that there will be two audio sources. One which controls our river sound. Actually, we should add that. I... River sound goes there. Okay. So now we have our river. And as we run by these rocks, nothing happens. So let's go into the script and say river. So river sound was clearly too loud on initializing. So let's say here that river source dot volume equals 0.5 F. There we go. So the river sound is now playing like that. Let's go and find a different river sound. Let's see if we can find a river rock sound. Okay, I have found a river sound, which is here. Just, just a little more splashy than the previous one. So let's go down to our audio emitter script here and say that we have, this is our rock sound that we want there. So now that we play, we will have two audio sources, one for the river and one for this, uh, this, uh, this bubbly part here. And now let's try and listen to, let's try with press play and then we will mute the, um, the river sound so that we can hear if the, actually we could just remove this here. And then this part, the river um, river rocks will fade in as we get over there. Now, this isn't smooth at all. So this would basically just be really like hard, hard volume, 0 to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Um, and of course, we need some sort of, of smoothing, which is mathf.lerp, which can smooth these values. But we'll, we'll get to that. This is just an example of how we can generate a river like this. We'll find the emitter so we can see it. You can see the sounds look pretty, pretty, um, pretty good. So let's see here, and we have a river here. Press play. Two audio components, as expected. They both initialize and loop, not plan awake, because we call them directly. One of them has 0 0.5 in volume. The other one has no volume. Now let's try and walk by and see if we can hear the river. See, the river here is, actually, this is wrong. <laughs> we need to initialize this because the river needs to be spatial, of course. So we need the river source dot spatial blend to be equal one. We need the same thing because this, the spatial blend is um, if it's 3D or 2D. And of course, it works fine with the 3D with the 2D sound for the sake of the example if it fades in or out. But we want it to be 3D. So now that we press play, the sound should actually also be coming from there. So we should be able to rotate the camera and hear the the river sound pan. Yes, to our right, to our left, to our right. Okay. Works pretty smooth actually. So now we have, although very primitive, we have actually made a spline system that follows us automatically and it can automatically track if there are rocks or just plain river. And it's basically a self generating river system. Thank you very much for watching. This is very primitive, but it 
you probably get the idea. Now we will get to how we can make this a little more advanced in the next couple of videos. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, why don't you hit the like and subscribe button? Or even better, head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel. I would really appreciate it. Especially today, now that it is my 39th birthday. You heard it first here. I am that old. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.